If you can dream it, it can become your reality. Welcome to Dreamcatchers, where we meet entrepreneurs who have left their home country to move to Costa Rica and start a business in paradise. These are real people and their real stories behind following their dreams to a little Central American paradise and how they made it work despite the odds. Welcome to Dreamcatchers Costa Rica. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dreamcatchers Costa Rica. Today, we are here in beautiful Playa Flamingo, Costa Rica, located in the Juanacaste province. We're going to be meeting with one of my friends, Jean-Luc Toler, who is the owner of Coco Loco and Terrazas Event Center. He's going to tell us what it took him to get successful here in Paradise. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dream Catchers. Today, we're going to be talking to Jean-Luc Toler, who is the owner of Coco Loco. We're here in Playa Flamingo, Costa Rica. Thank you so much for having us today. My pleasure. Okay. Well, first and foremost, we want to know when you came to Costa Rica. So I came in 2004. I uh, was in Sarasota, Florida, and my my dad and I had a restaurant, a classic French restaurant, and um, I came here on vacation and went back and told my, my folks I was going to move to Costa Rica. And uh, six months later, I drove here from Florida. You drove here? Yeah. Okay. It took a month. and. Went through, uh, spent most of the time in Mexico because Mexico is huge. It's a big country. Yeah, and we decided not to spend much time like in Nicaragua because I knew I was moving here and I could always go back. So um, in El Salvador, it wasn't too safe. So we kind of pushed Kept through that. Going. Yeah, I spent some time in Guatemala. Um, and yeah, we had an amazing trip. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Before you moved to Costa Rica, how many times did you visit? So I was only here one time. I uh, came on vacation. For, uh, it was supposed to be for 10 days and my trip got cut short because I had to fly back and get a, a death in the family and I had to go take care of the restaurant back in the States so my dad could fly to France. And um, and I, that might be part of the reason too I moved down here because I was just like, I had so much fun and, and I was so upset that the, my trip got cut short and then I ended up being down here uh, permanently like six months later. Awesome. You mentioned that you had a restaurant with your dad in Sarasota, but what was the inspiration behind starting Coco Loco? So, well, it's my background. I, I, I grew up in restaurants. It's what I've always done. And um, so that's the main reason. Um, and uh, Coco Loco itself, I saw an opportunity. My uh, a good friend of mine owned the property. It was just a home. And uh, I, I, I saw that the location was ideal right on the beach. Uh, there wasn't much um, to offer to people that are going to the beach. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the idea was born. And, and little by little, we kind of grew the, the, the restaurant. It started out very small, just with a food truck and two tables. No kidding. Yeah. I wasn't here that long ago to know that. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a picture somewhere. I'll show you, it's pretty crazy. It's a food right. truck with a couple, a little bit of equipment. Um, we operated the whole restaurant with three people. That's amazing. Yeah. You were like bringing food trucks to Costa Rica before food yeah. trucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. What exactly does your business offer to clients? So I think the the, the, the biggest problem that we solve is um, something for people that are on the beach mm -hmm. to be able to get a cold drink, get something to eat. Um, we're also offering beachside, beachfront dining, which there is in the area, but there's not that many. Um, there's none on, on Flamingo Beach, which is a gorgeous beach. Um, so I think that's where we're allowed, we're providing experience on the beach and offering the comforts of uh, you know food and drink and, and and necessities for when you're here on the beach. And not too long ago, you opened up Terrazas. Yeah, where... so we opened up Terrazas a couple of years ago. It's a, an event center. Mm -hmm. We had some challenges because we opened up an event center right before a pandemic, so that was uh, difficult to maneuver through. But um, we're now back operating again. We did a wedding last week. We have uh, events coming back, and the idea is just as uh, the, the pandemia hopefully continues to slowly go away and the marina gets completed, we'll be able to do uh, hopefully a, a couple of events a week. Awesome. Can you tell us uh, your hours of operation? So Coco Loco opens at 11 till right now nine because we're dealing with some restrictions, uh, but normal normal times we, open, we close at 10, because you close at 10, so Perfect. 11 to 10. Can you tell us some of the challenges that you've encountered, and I know there's some. Yeah. Because I also own a business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here in Costa Rica. I think probably the the one of the first that comes to mind when I moved down here was um, dealing with purveyors in the restaurant business because in, in the states there's ten options 
Um, and within that, there's probably still two or three really good options. So if one of your purveyors makes a mistake, and you ask them to correct and they don't, you can switch to another purveyor. When I first moved down here, there was one called Velka and they would send me, the product would be not good, the quality wouldn't be good or they wouldn't send the right amount or there'd be mistakes and I would get upset and I'd say, oh, I'm not gonna use it anymore. And they, they'd basically say, you know other options. So <laughs> that was, I remember it took a long time for me to adjust to because in the States you'd be like, you're done, I'll, I'll call somebody else. And then you have somebody else that minute bringing you product. So. Um, I think moving down here, that was the first and the, and the biggest challenge. Did you ever dream that Coco Loco would be so popular? No, to be honest with you, when we first started out, there was a lot of people that were close to me that were not, um, they didn't think it was gonna work. When we first opened and we were very, very small, um, that, that it was right after 2007, tourism wasn't that strong with the whole economic crisis and this end of Flamingo, there wasn't many people, there wasn't lots going on. And um, it was more of like a secluded kind of beach. It wasn't really... It was more of a destination. Yeah, the population of people going to the beach and in the area wasn't a lot. And, and a lot of people, you know, I'd ask advice to other people and they're like, yeah, I don't know. So it was a risk um, in that sense. And, um, and I never thought, I remember running the numbers and said, well, if we could do, you know, I think it was like 30 people a day, um, then, then we'll be able to you know, make payments and everything will be fine. And we're, we're averaging now 300 people a day. Wow, so. so I think you did okay. We did okay. I think you yeah, proved them a big, wrong. A big, a big change, yeah. <laughs> Despite the challenges, are you happy that you opened up shop? Of course, um, yeah, I couldn't see my life any other way. I'm, I'm super happy that I'm here. And there is challenges all the time. Things, some things get better uh, over time, but um, it's definitely a, a lot of things that you don't have to deal with in the States, you have to deal with here. But I'll take it like that. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy. And sometimes vice versa, right? Yeah. Um, well, I already know the answer to this, but do you speak Spanish? Yes. Did you learn Spanish when you came here? I did. I spoke very little bit of Spanish, kitchen Spanish, that I learned yeah. in the kitchen in the States um, that was limited to vocabulary associated with the kitchen, right? Yeah. Um, and I moved, <laughs> kitchen Spanish. It's like yeah. business Spanish. Right? Yeah. And when I got down here, um, we opened up a business almost immediately and I had to hire staff and and so I was kind of forced to learn quickly. I speak French fluently so that helped me a lot. There's a lot of similarities, even with English and Spanish, but French and Spanish as well. So I think that helped me learn uh, pretty quick. Do you feel French has helped you more or yeah. Spanish? Um, <laughs> both. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? So I'm a seventh generation chef. Uh, my dad is from the south of France. Uh, a little town called Le Pertus, and um, he moved to the States in like 35 years now, and uh, he opened up restaurants with my mom, and um, I kind of grew up in the restaurant business. And when I was in high school and had to decide what college I was gonna go to and what I was gonna do with my life, I felt like I had already had a couple years on most other people because I had been working in the restaurant since I was 13, so, um, I felt I had a kind of an advantage, and so I went that direction, and yeah. You know. Can you tell us a little bit about your family? I know other than obviously your father is from France. So my mom is from Buffalo. Yes, yes. my favorite town. <laughs> and um, I, I live here with, uh, my brother lives here as well. I have a younger brother that's nine years younger. He does uh, tennis and, and involved with photography. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, uh, my sister lives in Maui. Um, and yeah, my mom works with me. My dad's retired now. Um, so you're saying that your your dad is retired. He obviously owned a really successful restaurant here in Plaza Flamingo for a while, mm -hmm. and now he's yes. retired. But he's, he's yeah, the he's best always food involved, critic. and yeah, no, and he's always helping out. And what better advice than somebody that's been in the restaurant business for 50 years? I mean, so the retirement was well deserved for him. Spent a lot of years working really hard, uh, but yeah, he's never gonna be, get, hang up the hat forever. He's always telling me to check on this, or you might want to check this, or this sauce tastes a little bit different. So um, it's it actually gives him something to do, and it's great for me because I get some help. He's your quality sense. control. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah. What do you like to do when you're not working? So um, I love to surf, uh, mountain bike. Uh, I don't, it's, it's been tough to find time. Well, we went through the pandemic, and then all of a sudden things are coming back, so it's, we, I'm still looking for that balance, but. Um, yeah, I would say outdoor activities, um, being on the water, spearfishing, surfing, mountain biking. Awesome. 
And now you have a new baby girl. So yeah, that's taking my a daughter was born two time. months ago, and that's a whole new uh, life-changing experience. But it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, the big question: How do you do it all? Um, I have a lot of help, yeah. and I'm very fortunate. I have uh, we have 30 employees in Copa Loco, and most of them, over half, have been with me for close to 10 years or 10 years. Um, I'm a firm believer in not rotating staff and hiring people for, for long term. And it shows with the staff that we have. Um, and I, I feel very fortunate because I have some really good people. For sure. Them. No, I've seen a lot of your, the same faces. Yeah. So obviously are very loyal, so that's great. What is your vision for the business? I know you also obviously are involved in catering. Do you mm -hmm. want to open up like Copa Loco B? Are you looking for um, to expand catering along the coast? So right now, my, my number one focus and priority is to get Terrasas to its full potential. And um, I, I think that's gonna line up when things start changing and, and, and in our favor with the marina and the pandemic and everything. So right now, opening up another Coca-Cola, I don't think is in our cards. Um, we're, we're, we're real busy with catering offsite and in other areas. And I wanna bring that into, I think Terrasas has a huge potential and I think it's just a matter of people understanding it. Like wedding planners aren't booking us right now and then they do a wedding and then within a few weeks they'll book three or four other weddings because they experience it. So that's my goal is to get the, try to get that out there and, and, and people to see the potential that we have. Okay. The last question is, Ooh. how has Costa Rica changed over the years? Okay. Um, do you find it easier to live here now than you did back in 2004? I find it so much. I, I've, huge, huge changes. And some of the stuff that we used to do, I can't even believe that we used to do it. Like when I first got here, I would have to drive to Santa Cruz, which took two hours to go to a supermarket uh, because the roads weren't, the, the, the main road to the land wasn't paid. Um, and some of that stuff that we would do that would take so much time, I can't even believe that we, we were doing it. And so little things like that have made life so much easier. The available product, for me, and being in the restaurant business um, has, I mean, completely changed. You can get almost any, pretty much anything you you, you want to get now. Um, Fifteen years ago, that wasn't the case at all. No. You have a client that says you want rack of lamb. I, I it would, if I wanted to try to get lamb, it would take me four months to get it in for somebody on um, special order import, because it yeah, it was, it, it, there's all these products weren't available. So that, now, now, how do you get a rack of lamb? You call up one of four purveyors in the area and they all have it so okay. yeah but that wasn't the case though. wasn't the case in, in, in yeah. the beginning I, yeah. I remember that Let's see. yeah i tell was, people there was no lot of mercado no it was the wild west no, um no much paper, more there's no yeah. real airport i call i call the liberia airport like the four or five years, yeah so. yeah yeah it was the hangar yeah, yeah exactly um okay so that's the last question i don't know if you want to if there's anything you want to add because sometimes i go off this too but i don't know if there's anything you feel like it's worth mentioning? Um, I think if I were to mention something, it is the people of Costa Rica are incredible. They're, they're good people. Um, they're happy people that, I've learned a lot from the people of Costa Rica. And um, I think that's one of the, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm most grateful for living here is learning about, learning from the people of Costa Rica. That's a super good point. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really awesome. I super appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. To give us a little bit of background on you and your business and I hope it continues and I uh, hope we get to see you in the future again. All right, sounds awesome. great.